All right, so now I have three plates here that I want to add XGAL to one of these three plates. Here I have a plate with a minus, meaning it has no ampicillin, the antibiotic ampicillin. It's labeled with the U because I'm going to put untransformed bacteria on it. This is a plus with a U, so it has ampicillin. It will get untransformed bacteria. This is a plus with a T. It has ampicillin. And it is going to get a T, which means that um, it's transformed. And then I'm also going to add X gal to that plate. Okay. Here is my container of X gal. It's black because X gal um, is sensitive to light. I'm going to grab a pipetter, put on a pipette tip. This is at 40 microliters. I will then take my pipetter, get 40 microliters of XGAL, and I will put it on the plate. Now what I want to do is I actually want to take a loop and spread it around the plate. So I'm going to light the Bunsen burner so that it is sterile and I don't get anything on my plate. I'll then take my loop again, heat up my loop so that it is nice and bright. Move this out of the way so you can see. And then I'm just going to spread this around. I'm going to just take the loop and then I'm just going to spread this around nice and steady. And we'll make it all the way throughout the whole plate. So I want to make sure that we have plenty everywhere throughout the old plate. Now you can use a lot of things. Um, we're using the loops in this case, but there are spreaders that work well. And I'm just going to make sure that we get X gal everywhere throughout this plate. You notice I'm not gouging the auger. I'm just going nice and smooth off the top. All right, there we go. And then I'll heat my loop over here, and we will be set. Ligation is the process of taking a segment of DNA from our PCR product, which is here, and ligating it into a vector or a plasmid. This plasmid then is called a topo vector because it has topisomerase on the ends of the plasmid, meaning that it is a linearized plasmid rather than being circular. If you recall last week then, the um, three prime ends resulting from the PCR have adenine overhangs. Our topisomerase then is attached to thymine overhangs. When our adenine attaches to our thymine, it snaps in kind of like a Lincoln log or something like that. So the process then is very simple. I just simply take um, one microliter of my PCR product, add it to five microliters of my topo vector, and then let it sit. So we will start by grabbing a sterile microcentrifuge tube. Okay. My pipetter then is a 0.5 to 1 microliter pipetter. It is set on 5. I'll gently grab the pipette tip. We'll start with our greatest volume, so we'll start with our topo vector. And I will then go in and grab 5 microliters of my topo vector. And we'll put this into the bottom of the tube. Hold down that thumb when I pull out, make sure that it's in that tube. Okay, I would get rid of my pipette tips, switch pipette tips, grab our, oops, change this to one microliter. And we'll gently make sure that we change it so we don't mess up here. Then I'll get my PCR product. We'll get one microliter of that PCR product and put that one microliter 
in with the vector. Okay. Now this is ready to sit as we move to the next step. Okay, so five minutes have passed. Here is my tube with my ligated vector. I have created two tubes where I basically took a sterile microcentrifuge tube labeled it U, a sterile microcentrifuge tube labeled it T. I am now going to take a P1000, 100 to 1000 microliter pipetter. I'm going to take that pipetter and I'm going to add a tip. It is set at 250 microliters. Here I have ice cold calcium chloride. So I'm going to take that ice cold calcium chloride, add it to my U-tube, which is untransformed, and I will add it to my T-tube, which is transformed because my untransformed is my control. So both of those tubes are treated exactly the same. Now what I have here is a plate of E. coli. This plate then has 36 hour E. coli colonies growing on it. Each of those tiny dots there is an E. coli colony. I'm going to take three colonies, put it in the U-tube, three colonies, put it in the T-tube. To start with then I'm going to turn on the gas. Since it's bacteria, we have to be sterile, make sure that no contamination occurs. So then I have a loop, and I'll take that loop, put it to the top of the cone until that gets bright red. Then I will take my tube, or my E. coli. We'll just gently touch it to the side here, and I'll take three colonies of my E. coli gently. Then I'll take it and put it in the U2, mix it up, get it all in there. Then I have to sterilize my loop again. And I'll repeat, I'll put this to the edge to cool off the tip of my tube. Then I'm going to grab three colonies and place those in the T-tube. When I'm done then I will heat my loop so that I kill all of those bacteria. Return my lid to my E. coli and I'll move my E. coli over here and shut off the gas. Now I'm going to grab a different pipetter and this one I'm going to set to six microliters because I have six microliters of my ligated vector. Now my transformation is when we get a ligated vector into the bacteria. So my U-tube is untransformed. I'm not going to add ligated bacteria to here. Instead, I'm going to add it all to that tube. So I will now take a pipette tip. We'll go in here, we'll go clear to the bottom and slowly get all of that ligated vector and we will put it into this T tube for transformed. And my tubes have been on ice for 15 minutes. I'm now going to take them out and put them into this dry bath. This dry bath is set at 42 degrees centigrade and I will leave them there for 90 seconds and then take them out. These tubes have been at 42 degrees C for 90 seconds. I'm going to remove our transformed tube and our untransformed tube from the dry block. Now I want to add 250 microliters. This is a P1000 set at 250 of the rhea broth to each of the tubes. So we get a tip and then just get 250 microliters and gently add 250 microliters to the T-tube. And then we will add, get another tip, and add 250 microliters of Luria broth to the YouTube.
So 15 minutes have passed. I'm now ready to inoculate my plates with my transformed and untransformed bacteria. So what I'm going to do is I need a pipetter and a pipette tip. This is set to 50 microliters. I will get a pipette tip. Then I will get 50 microliters of my untransformed. We will put that into our untransformed plate. I get 50 microliters of my untransformed again. And we'll put it into the other untransformed plate. Then I will get 50 microliters of my transformed and put it into my transformed plate. Now I need to spread um, the bacteria all around, so I'm going to use a flame to keep things sterile. So I'll turn on the gas till I barely hear it. Light the Bunsen burner, then we'll take our loop and flame the loop. Then in this case, I'll actually just cool it down a little bit on the side. Then I need to spread this around really well across the whole entire plate. Okay, I'm going to flame my loop again, make sure that everything is very, very sterile. And again, I'll just let it cool down in a fluid. There's so much of it. We'll spread these around all over the entire plate. Flame my loop again, make sure I kill everything. And we'll just cool it down again in the water. And we'll spread it around over the entire plate. Flame it one more time. And then I'm going to put all three of these plates into the incubator. They will be incubated upside down like that for 48 hours and upon 48 hours then we will take them out and look at them. So it's been 48 hours. These have been incubating then at 35 degrees C for two days. Here is our no ampicillin plate with untransformed. Our ampicillin plate with untransformed and our ampicillin plate with transformed and remember this one also had excal on it as well. If we look here at our untransformed um, with no ampicillin, tons of bacteria. So that whole, all that is bacteria growing on it. So that's looking good. Tran untransformed with ampicillin then, no bacteria at all, nothing growing on that plate. Are transformed then with Xgal and um, ampicillin is completely white. So a lot of colonies growing. These are ampicillin resistant. Since Xgal is on it, nothing is blue. So all of these have the ligated vector inside. If ligation failed, then the colonies would be blue, and I see no colonies that are blue. So all of these went through ligation and have the ligated vector inside them.